What is up guys, I am The Six Machine and welcome back to another Warhammer video. So continuing on from yesterday, the Warhammer community page has put out part 2 of its Death Guard Codex rules preview. So again, this will probably be a very very short sweet video, as the articles themselves aren't particularly long, which kind of makes sense I feel like with the delay to the Death Guard Codex, Games Workshop are trying to keep the hype alive uh, and just keep everyone sort of like excited for the codex but obviously they can't just throw out everything for us just yet as much as i'm sure we all want them to um just because the codex has been delayed doesn't mean that they can kind of just like give us all the rules um straight off the bat they still have to keep that hype going and keep us sort of waiting um in expectation for the codex to release early next year but today's article covers yet another of the previously mentioned five key changes to the rules of the Death Guard that is going to change the army that they mentioned in their first article yesterday. This one today is the Deadly Pathogens ability. And what this is essentially is an upgrade which can be given to your Death Guard characters who have a plague weapon. It seems much like the... Um, the Heroes of the Chapter upgrade that Marines can take where you can either pay a points cost or a power level cost to give one of these uh, upgrades, one of these deadly pathogens to your chosen character. And as you can see on your screen now, what it does is essentially adds one to the strength of a given plague weapon, but you also get to choose one of seven effects to apply to it as well. The one that they showcase here, Viscous Death, lets you re-roll the number of attacks made with a weapon which has a random number of attacks. And they supplement this by saying that the new Lord of Virulence, whose weapon is called the Plague Spewer, is going to be a great target of this. As you can see, his weapon is a range 12, heavy 2d6, strength 5, minus 1, 1 damage. So it's essentially a plague heavy flamer, it also has the plague weapon rule which means that you can give it this uh, deadly pathogen ability um, and means that when you give it to him you've got the um, plague spewer hitting at strength 6 instead of strength 5 and with 2d6 shots which you can re-roll uh, to see how many you get so you're much more likely to avoid that double one that everyone hates to see when you have a d6 or 2d6 shot weapon. So being a plague weapon as well, it still keeps that reroll of ones to wound, which they had before. So essentially with this example that they've given us here, the Lord of Virulence, it is potentially 12 shots, auto hitting, wounding on threes, rerolling ones because of the plague weapon, and then taking their saves down to four, which isn't bad, to be honest. It's it's not a bad, you could do a, you could do a fair bit of damage to... Uh, a, a unit of, of marines even with their two wounds you could still potentially like take out six marines if you if you rolled perfectly with this one um and obviously depending on price it's going to vary whether it's taken or not because it is very short range it's only a 12 inch range gun and this may well be a very slow moving character because he is obviously still a death guard character but if he can deep strike or has some other way of getting up the board, it could potentially do a good bit of damage. And likewise, if he's in your army and you're being charged, this is going to be one of those weapons where the enemy is going to have to really kind of stop and think for a minute and about whether they, they really do want to charge this model and potentially take 12 auto hits uh, before they even uh, make it into combat. I think that overall, this deadly pathogen rule, uh, Viscous Death specifically, seems... A little bit underwhelming to me but i do like the idea behind it it gives me the vibe of the frost weapons that the space wolves got in their supplement and i like the fact again that there are seven different choices the the fluff person in me really really does appreciate that when games workshop use the the chaos chosen numbers i don't know why but whenever i kind of in my head build the chaos force i always use the chosen numbers for sort of like the squad sizes so that just kind of appeals to me. What I'm hoping as well is that because there are seven choices, even though this one is, I will admit, a little bit underwhelming, there may be some that are good to use on specific characters. Maybe there's one that let, lets you sort of re-roll a wound or, or get extra AP, or maybe I wouldn't be surprised if there was something that lets you auto wound on hit rolls of six, something like that. Those are the kind of things that I am expecting to see from this deadly pathogen rule overall. I just think that Viscous Death is very niche and generally 
I try to avoid like random shot weapons as much as possible anyway. So one that lets you re-roll it does make it more reliable, this is true, but I still don't think I would take this um, if I if I had to pay points for it. It will be interesting to see what the other ones are, but I have a funny feeling that they will probably be better, or at least some of them will be better than getting re-rolled to the number of shots on a, uh, a random shot weapon. I think that really, I mean, this preview was very, very short, so there isn't too much to say, but I think realistically, there's nothing here that is out of this world or game changing for the Death Guard. And I certainly don't think that this rule, um, the deadly pathogens ability is gonna be one that makes or breaks how competitive the Death Guard are on the tabletop. I do like the fluff of it, and I, again, I like the fact that there are seven options, but I, I think that it's going to be some of the other changes, some of the other five key changes to the Death Guard rules that really uh, influence whether the Death Guard are going to be a force to be reckoned with on the tabletop. This seems, as I said, very much like the Frost Weapon or the, the Special Issue War Gear that Marines get, which is sometimes nice to take, like some of the, the stuff in there isn't bad to take for Marines, but it's not why you get excited about a Marine Codex or a Marine Supplement, it's just a nice addition. But at the end of the day, hopefully it allows Death Guard players to customise their characters a bit more and make things a little bit more unique, and if there's certain scenarios where uh, certain abilities will come into play, like certainly if you have a character with, if you have a Lord of Virulence and you know you're going up against, you know, a horde, a green tide army of orcs or a tyranid horde, maybe maybe this one, the, the viscous death one, wouldn't be a bad one to get because with his gun you'd be re-rolling the number of shots, you could get up to 12 shots, you'd be strength 6 so you'd be wounding most of the, the nid sort of stuff on 2s, re-rolling 1s because of the plague weapon, so I could see it being useful in some very niche scenarios but what I'm hoping for is that each of these 7 options that you can take for the deadly pathogens will be very useful in a specific scenario so that you can kind of customize your characters to be the best fit for whatever situation you're up against. So that's it, that is the preview for today, deadly pathogens. Let me know what you think about this rule overall and what some of the other effects you expect to see or you would like to see alongside viscous death let me know in the comments below and as always thank you very much for watching these videos please do like and subscribe if you want to see more from me and until next time i'll catch you later guys